Welcome to the underground, you rebel scum. This is the American Expat, and today, well, we're we're diverging from what we have been doing because I feel like it's uh, akin to burying my head in the sand while a tornado is coming or something like that and pretending like everything is going to be all right. I just saw this article uh, talking about something that Elon Musk has revealed how the Biden administration had flown 320,000 illegal immigrants into the country. Now, you know, we, we've been hearing about millions and millions of people coming across the border. How is this any different? Well, <laughs> because think, think back to it. Just carefully listen to what I am saying. The Biden administration flew on planes 320 illegal immigrants into the country from outside of the country. That's right. They themselves are involved in human trafficking outright, literally. They're supplying the planes. They're flying them in using government agencies and sending them off to who knows where. And when people ask about it, like, how do you know, you know, like, are you keeping track of these people, where they're at, what they're doing? They say, well, we can't do that because that might uh, that might be dangerous for national security. I'm uh, I'm a little confused on that point. You'll have to excuse my antics here as I'm getting some caffeine. I, uh, Although I did set out to do something very different today, I'm doing this. But still, we can talk a little bit about the camera. I've switched. I've got a 35-millimeter prime lens from Sony on the camera. It's not the most expensive lens in the world, but uh, do I look better? <laughs> Am I looking better? The last video I did was in S-Log, and boy, that fell apart uh, Pretty quick when I actually render the video. Anyway, let's let's move on from that. So they're saying all this crazy talk about how keeping track of these illegal immigrants is somehow a danger to national security or for law enforcement. And I'm kind of confused on that point. I, I don't think that there's there's nothing that you can draw from that that makes any sense at all. It just means that they're they they don't even know themselves. Of course they're not tracking the people that they brought into the country illegally. That would defeat the purpose of whatever it is they're trying to do. I don't know. I've had some thoughts about this, and um, it's a little bit uh, bone-chilling when I uh, started thinking of it this way. So, you know, there's all this stuff happening in the world. Everybody is saying how we're on the verge of World War III. Uh, Putin and his people are threatening that, you know, hey, we've got nuclear weapons. <clears throat> and I'm afraid that a lot of people in younger generations don't realize just what we're dealing with. You know, maybe you've got that uh, that gold and blue Ukrainian flag in your uh, your profile, and your eye is right on the target, whether you realize it or not. You're just not seeing it for what it is. So Russia, you know, the other side, the, the people that are being led by Putin, the dictator, well, they, uh, they see this conflict as an existential crisis. If uh, they lose here, then, you know, it's like a threat to Russia itself. Their very continued existence is on the line. And so, like he said, and his people have said, they have nuclear weapons and they will use them. Um, what does that mean? Well, Russia, the again, the other side, they have enough thermonuclear weapons, thermonuclear bombs on the end of ICBMs, which are intercontinental ballistic missiles, meaning they're these rockets that launch up and they can go anywhere in the world and blow up any target, and there's not really anything you can do about it. Well, they have enough of those to destroy the Earth many times over. So do we. And uh, the Russians, guess what? Those, uh, those ICBMs with those bombs on them, they're pointed right at you and me. And um, <laughs> we're, we're getting involved in this conflict where they, they don't see any way out. If they lose, then that's the end of them. So they're, and they're threatening to use these weapons. We're in big, big trouble. But, uh, yeah, I've kind of diverged from this, uh, this whole thing with the illegal immigration. But my point is the, the threat of World War III seems to be everywhere. And more and more it seems like the people that are in charge of our countries are determined that World War III is going to happen. I don't know how. It's like uh, they just know it. They, they probably know things that we don't know. Obviously, they, they, I hope they know things that we don't know. But uh, this is the way things are going. They're, they're you know, even France now talking about how— we will, you know, Ukraine is going to win, Russia is going to lose, even if it means we're going to put, put boots on the ground. Uh, NATO troops, they're going to go in, and some people are saying they're already there. 
So let's say we get involved. It, it does escalate and we get into World War III and suddenly the uh, Biden administration or whoever's in charge, they have, find themselves in need of soldiers to go fight the war because, well, recruiting numbers have been so down thanks to Biden and his crazy people that uh, they just don't have enough people to fight the war. So what do they have to do? They have to, they have to use the draft. They will start calling all the young people to go to war. And, uh, well, that leads to a certain problem. If all of the young people go off to war, who's going to be here to make the stuff? Who's going to be here to make the tanks and the bullets and the ships and the jets and all the stuff that you have to use when you're fighting a war? Well, here come the illegal immigrants that they've let in in mass. Have you ever stopped to consider that maybe that's their purpose? Because let's face it, you can't legally draft someone who's a non-citizen. You can't make them go join the military. And putting your hopes on having them go and join the military to get citizenship— uh, that's a little bit of a stretch. I know a lot of people, myself included, have thought of that. You know, like, gosh, what if they fill the ranks of the military with, with them? What if that's not what it is? What if it's that they're planning to draft people into the military to go fight this war, and they're going to use the illegal immigrants for what they've always used them for, um, uh, cheap labor? That's Maybe that's the plan. And, uh, you know, of course they're going to go along with it. They'll escape from whatever hellhole they came from and get paid good money and— uh, you know, drive, I guess, the war machine here in the United States. It's a little bit chilling. I'm I'm too old to be drafted. A lot of you who watch this are too old to be drafted. But if you're in a younger generation, if you're Gen Z or the uh, the back end of the uh, the millennial generation, guess what? You might be getting notice in the mail at some point that you have to go off to fight a war. And they're going to replace you at your job, I guess, with one of these migrant workers. And I'm, I'm not saying this to be against the migrant people. I'm just saying this is terrifying if that is the case, that maybe the reason they're bringing them in here, I know a lot of people are going to say there could be multiple reasons. It doesn't have to be black or white. But um, this might be a major reason why they're bringing all these people in. It's so that they can come and take your place while you go to fight the war. Um, let, let's face it, they, they have not shown any consideration or concern about American citizens over the, uh, the course of the Biden administration. Uh, why would you expect that they would do it now? Why would you think that they're going to send the migrants who they've shown favor to to go fight the war instead of you when they have shown nothing but disdain for you and me? I mean, it's... Um, I can just, I see it coming. I, I can see it coming. You know, of course, I have a pretty strong imagination, but um, it, it's still a little bit terrifying to consider that that might be a possibility. Uh, what what else could there be? I mean, there there's so much happening in the news right now. As I am recording this, it's my understanding that Facebook has experienced some kind of a cyber attack. When I heard about it, I tried to get on, and my uh, my account seems to be working just fine. But um, that makes me wonder if it's on the phone. I don't use the. I try to avoid those things on the phone because I I don't like that uh, I can just get on it anywhere. You know, if I'm going to get on some kind of social media app, then I prefer that I have to actually go to it, you know, like on the computer. And even then, I don't enjoy it, so I don't really get on all that often, except for YouTube. I like to get on here and post my videos, as always. But um, ah, again, you know, I'd really like to go and do a different kind of video. I never set out to uh, to make this kind of video. But the, the, the way that the world is, I, I don't know if I could survive <laughs> I don't know if I could survive with my sanity intact if I didn't have this outlet. My wife, you know, she's a, a very practical person. She's, you know, grown up in a world where you don't trust the government anyway. And when I start talking to her about, you know, like, oh, my gosh, the government's insane. Look what they're doing. She's just shrugs her shoulders like, well, what do you expect? You know, <laughs> that, that's the government. That's what they do. Um, I, I didn't grow up in China, so I'm I'm. You know, I'm used to living in the illusion, at least, that it's a government by the people, for the people, and of the people, and all of that stuff. Uh, more and more, we're seeing that it's not. I mean, look at that journalist that got arrested by the FBI the other day, just for reporting on the wrong thing. More and more, you know, this, I, I expect this. Like, when I was living in China, sure, I expect that, you know, I know that that's going to happen, because... If you, I mean, it, it's not something that's hidden. Here we, we pretend like we have rights. We have, you know, the First Amendment. We can do, we can say what we want, and uh, you can't do anything about it. Well, guess what? 
Suddenly, you think you're exercising your First Amendment rights, and they arrest you. The FBI says, come turn yourself in, and they put you in chains and march you away. They lock you up. Um, in China, you at least know, you know, you have that expectation, like, if I talk about this subject, then I'm going to be in trouble. I'm not saying it's right. It, it's terrible. But at least you know. Here, you know, uh, we, we expect that the government is going to follow its own rules, its own laws, and lately they just aren't. And I have to wonder how long it's been. Now I'm hearing about these uh, donations. I know this came out a while ago. This is another uh, little thing that's been going through. Boy, I should really break these up into separate videos. But, um, yeah, the, the donations coming in from all over the world, who knows where. They, they say, like, this person gave, you know, four donations of this amount to the uh, such and such group, you know, four times a day for the last 14 years. And they're like, oh, I never did that. Well, you know, where do you think that's coming from? Our government is not under our control. It's not under the control of Americans. It's under the control of something else. And maybe that's part of the problem. Uh, we're being manipulated. Well, I don't know that we're being, they, do, they don't really care at this point what we think. Anyway, I, I thought I'd uh, put this together, just some of my thoughts on this, uh, this whole thing. I'd be curious what you guys think. Um, is that what they're doing? They're bringing these illegal immigrants in with the idea that they're going to draft American citizens to fill up the ranks of the military and send them off to war. And I'm talking to you, millennials. I'm not millennials. I'm a millennial, but uh, Gen Z and other millennials who are younger than me. They are, they're planning on drafting you and then uh, replacing you at work with um, illegal immigrants that they have brought into the country conveniently as this crisis in uh, Ukraine and everywhere else in the world continues to escalate. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm often wrong. But this is a thought that occurred to me. I don't know. You'll have to let me know what you think. I'll see you guys tomorrow.